Now I'm sure all of you have heard or most of you have heard of a hinge cut before. Hinge cuts are a very viable tool in any competent, credible deer manager's uh, toolbox. And I say that with a little bit of frustration because you know, anything we talk about, I'm not a big fan of controlled burns, I'm not a fan of hack and squirt, I'm not a fan, big fan of girdling, but there's always a place for those. So anyone that ever says never, um, really have to watch what else they're saying because a hinge cut, I even think I would place it, I only recommend it to 25% of all my clients I go to out of 90 clients. That means I'm, you know, whether it's 25 times or 20 or 18, whatever the number is, it's not the majority. In fact, it's just a minority of all landowners I recommend hinge cutting to, but I believe it has a far higher place than practices like girdling or hack and squirt or even controlled burns. Most of my clients can't benefit from either, any of those and I'll talk about some of that in a little bit. Hinge cuts are a very important tool in your toolbox of deer habitat management. I'm going to talk about what you might have or what you might look for on your land. You know a lot of parcels can just simply have timber harvest um, of their timber and select cut or clear cut, depending on the, the type of habitat they have, to actually promote great bedding area and to improve the deer carrying capacity of your land in general. And so there's a lot of timber harvest that can be done. Now there's a lot of lands that have giant red maples, maybe they're twisted and old. Um, they don't have, uh, it might be basswood, whatever it might be, that is an undesirable. And in those cases, and it might even be aspen or poplar, and in those cases, you're knocking down those huge shade trees. You're getting sunlight to the forest floor. And in some areas, you might knock down 100% in a one acre area because you, and then you'd have to clean it all up so deer can move around it. You don't want any overhead canopy that might cr crash in and destroy the bedding area years, years from now. You wanna make trails through it so deer can actually move through it, bed in it, and actually eat browse that's coming from it. Hinge cut trees, when it gets down to that size, so there's timber harvest, there's large canopy removal. A lot of times, uh, hinge cutting is the most labor intensive and it's just not needed on all lands. And that's a good thing if you don't have to hinge cut because then you don't have to waste your time doing so and, you, and it's more detail work, sometimes more dangerous. And especially with the way some of the people are hinge cutting online where they're cutting right at face level, I recommend none of you to do that. Um, if you're an expert and that's where you're an arborist and you do that for a living, maybe you can get away with it. But, um, you know, for the majority of you, you should never be cutting at face high. So you're looking for trees up to six to eight inches in diameter. And those are going to be the ones that you can hinge. And a hinge, you're making a parallel and level to the ground. So you're trying to make a level, 90 degree level. Um, but an area, if you put a level on that cut, it's going to be right level with that bubble in the middle. And with a level cut, you're going to be able to guide that cut the most. Now, another way you can guide it, and for me, is a necessary tool, not just a luxury, is a habitat hook. Or it's a hinge cutting tool that is available from Nick Nation at Nation's Creations in southern Michigan. And that is a tool I've been using for many years. In fact, I end up letting my friends borrow them and they crush it with a tree falling on it or whatever, or they keep them, like the one I, that's right now that I don't have. It's an important tool because it allows you to cut only through 50% of that tree that's up to six, eight, six to eight inches in diameter. That means that a high percentage of the outer cambium layer is protected, which is the lifeblood of the tree and facilitates the life that moves through the tree. And, and then at the same time, you can manage that hinge cut for decades to come. So you're really making sure that you're in that range that you need to make those cuts because you don't have big canopy. It, if You might have trees that are that size in your woods, but if you have 40, 50% canopy that can be removed by dropping large trees, you're not dropping one tree on top of the other and making too much of a mess. Maybe you could then hinge um, that, uh, that to that second layer of cutting and activity on your land to actually bring more browse down at ground level, but you are gonna have a lot of browse growing up with those that big canopy removal in the first place. And something I'll, I'll talk about in the future more, but you know, really on any property, there's a total of 100% of work that can be completed, obviously. So there's a maximum amount of work that can be completed on any parcel that would be appropriate. And that doesn't mean improving every square acre. That's, that's not the way it works. It's 
the, the best improvements and the best locations that facilitate deer movement across that land. So when it comes to hinge cutting, this is one of those things that, that where this applies. 80% of your plan can, can, be, can be completed with 20% of your amount of resources and time spent. I hope that makes sense. What I'm saying is you take 20% of the work that can complete that plan to 100% and you're gonna get 80% of the way there. Unfortunately, a lot of people spend time on hinge cuttings that aren't appropriate for their land, think other activities, and they're spending 80% of the amount of work to just finish that remaining 20% before they ever finish that base amount. So what I like to see you is spend a, a smaller amount of time, get 80% of the, the, the way there, and then start taking your activities and add those layers of activity and work throughout the years. As the years progress, but you're already 80% of the way the first year and you only did 20% of the work, hinge cuts are like that. A lot of times you can remove big canopy, put sunlight on the ground, clean up that canopy, remove all those logs, chainsaw through it so deer can move through it, there's no dead ends, and then now you have cover, you have side cover, you have regeneration, and you didn't even have to make a hinge cut. Yeah, you could make hinge cuts, add it to that, and complement those areas where you're not blocking deer with those hinge cuts, you're not making deer go under those hinge cuts, but now you're working on that remaining 20%, and it wasn't really necessary on most lands. Most people start with the 20% of hinge cuts, they're in a bunch of shade, and then three years later, they're dead because they didn't get any sunlight to them and they're useless. And that's, that's the order I see it. So you're spending this huge amount of work where they could have just knocked down 20 acres of timber and had an incredible deer property without ever even lifting a chainsaw for a hinge cut. And they would have taken the same amount of time as making hinge cut bedding areas. So hinge cuts are a viable tool. You're looking at trees that are six to eight inches in diameter. And if that's what you have, then you're looking at hinge cut pockets. A lot of times those hinge cuts are only going to be in those bedding areas. You're looking at those bedding areas as a half acre, a quarter acre. You're matching them to the lay of land. You're hiding it. You're putting hinge cut bedding areas against food sources so you have does. And you move doe bedding out of the woods right up against those food sources where they want to be. And then you're working on habitat improvements in the back where you can actually have bucks that are more in the depth of your cover and actually in a remote area where bucks choose to bed. You always want to make your hinge cuts hip high. Don't try to make those face high cuts. What you're doing is you're creating side cover, which is another original term that I coined a long time ago, and you're creating browse. And what you're doing is by creating that side cover, you're putting that, that hinge cut right at face level for the deer so they can eat the side growth that comes from out of that tree and out of that stump. That's side cover and food. Don't create canopy with your hinge cuts and expect deer to crawl under them and live under them. They're just not going to do that. They might do that from shade during the summertime and you can put some pictures on there. They might happen to have a bed under it during the winter time, but really they don't want to be in, under that canopy as a large rule. People can show pictures, you know, with exception online. You know, where, yeah, look at this hinge cut I made. See, they like to, to bed under that canopy area. But I'm talking about the other 99% of the time. In fact, I've seen some really cool pictures of uh, mule deers or whitetails bedding under a trampoline in a backyard. So I guess you could take that same thought that some teach and say, well, just put a bunch of trampolines around the woods and have great bedding. But no, they only choose to bed under those trampolines when it's excessively hot and they're looking for shade that they can't find elsewhere. They're in someone's cool, grassy yard, and then there's a trampoline there and it just creates an opportune time. Maybe they're even getting out of the, out of the bugs and out of the woods and swamps around there and looking for that protection. So side cover, side browse and food is necessary for a hinge cut and then what's really cool the whole idea of this with a hinge cut compared to girdling or controlled burns or hack and squirt is you're not trying to create forbs and forages and green growth during the summertime in springtime in early fall you're creating hardwood browse necessary hardwood browse that deer have to have in their bedding areas all fall and all winter so when you create hinge cuts, you're providing food and browse at head level. Again, not face high for us, not above us. So you're creating that head high browse so that deer can actually utilize it all fall and winter long. If you don't have hardwood regeneration, woody shrub tips, uh, briars, whatever it might be that they can browse on all fall and winter, then you're not actually creating an ability for you to not only have a good hunt, but actually control, attract, protect, advance, a nice quality herd within the area and to be the true leader in the neighborhood and the true herd influencer because if you're just making a controlled burn in your woods if you're hacking and squirting and you're allowing just herbaceous growth to come up during the summertime all that's dead in the fall 
So if it's all dead, you don't have that daytime browse and that's the entire reason why a hinge cut is an incredibly important tool that many landowners need to consider. And on top of that, most people are hacking and squirting and girdling the wrong trees. I've been on properties where they're girdling popple and aspen. They're girdling trees that offer incredibly high and important nutrition, cover, and hardwood regeneration during the day, cover to grouse, cover to deer, and in, in, in terms of saving oaks um, or walnuts or hickories or hard maple or cherry, because those are all dollar trees, but they're not wildlife trees. Acorns provide a little bit of value, a month or two, here and there, two weeks, some places, but it's not a sustainable food source for the entire fall and winter, and that's what hardwood browse is, and that's where the value of hinge cuts come in. Some of my favorite hinge cut trees are red maple, ash, box elder. They all provide excellent regeneration. Um, shagbark hickory, hickory can be a great hinge cut tree. Again, I'm using the habitat hook, so I'm not pushing that all the way through. I'm not cutting it all the way through. Makes it easy to guide that tree where you want to. Great for travel corridors too. Hinge cuts can be used to direct here. And that's where you want that straight line, occasional hinge so it's a little bit more subtle on the side, on either side to direct the traffic. In bedding areas, you want those deer to wander so you'd have random cuttings that actually make a maze and pocket effect that's full of brush and full of side cover. And a hinge cut can be very important. What you don't want a hinge cut is a popple tree, poplar, aspen. You don't want to hinge cut any kind of conifer tree. And a lot of times a red maple doesn't hinge cut real well. A cherry doesn't hinge cut real well. But those smaller trees and with a habitat hook, you can really increase your success rate on those. And the bottom line with these hinge cuts, if you're creating a hinge cut bedding area, if you're creating a hinge cut travel corridor, you can maintain those for decades to come. My first hinge cuts I created in the late 90s are still viable per the landowner that bought the land after, now 20 years later. And that's just something that you can cut again. You can hinge cut on top of a hinge cut three to four years later. A year or two later, you can tie down those hin that hinge cut growth, tie it right back down on the main trunk, create that living bush of red maple, uh, box elder, or ash, where you have that living bush that deer can feed on from the sides and it continues to grow. You can add conifers off to the side of hinge cut areas where you get that canopy down and then you put those hinge cuts back under some debris or those conifers back in under some debris of the hinge cuts or random cuttings those mature trees you're knocking down so that they're protected now you can diversify so they have that hard rege regeneration area combined with conifers you can diversify your woods so hinge cuts are great because if they match your plan they can provide and they match your habitat they can provide necessarily hardwood browse all winter, fall and winter. You have to have that type of browse to actually be able to mold and shape a deer herd. You can maintain those cuttings for decades to come. I know people that have been maintaining them for 25 years. So you can maintain those hinge cuts for many years to come. You keep them in the same spots. So you always keep your bedding in a certain area. You can put those hinge cuts where you need them if you have the type of trees to do so. You can match them easily to interior benches or saddles or points where bucks might want to bed. You really start with doe bedding first next to your food sources, and then you move back into the woods for buck bedding. So I encourage you to try hinge cuts. They're easy for the average skilled chainsaw user to use. Always wear chaps, face protection, head protection, and ear protection when you're cutting. I don't want to see any pictures of hinge cuts on my social media saying, look at what I did, and then you're not wearing that protection. If you're doing it at face level, you're not doing it correctly. Um, you don't need bedding logs in around your hinge cuts. That's a huge fad. Just put the, that those hinges cover those hinges down, waist level, get them down on the ground. And if you correctly create your hinge cuts on your land, and they're appropriate for your land, wow, they are an incredible tool, a very powerful tool. And in the bottom line, they create browse and cover when the deer need it the most during the fall and winter months. And it's okay if you're limiting your herbaceous growth on the ground because that's only available during the summertime. And don't paint yourself on the back with weedy food plots, a lot of herbaceous growth, controlled burns in the woods if it's just producing green. And uh, forbs and forages and that herbaceous growth that's only available during the times of plenty 
during the months of plenty and you're neglecting those fall and winter months and those hinge cuts can provide that and all i want you to do is have a great herd and a great hunt and if you follow the tips here follow the tips about these hinge cuts and on this channel they're specifically geared to you creating an outstanding herd and an outstanding hunt you can't have one without the other so if you create a lot of habitat and you have a lot of does and fawns you create that doe factory on your land and you don't have those bucks and that's not a great property you're not going to have a great hunt they both go together hinge cuts are one of the most powerful tools if appropriate for your land to put it all together for this fall great time to cut right now i'm talking about this in late january all the way through leaf out at that time and then you want to stop for a while um, so you're not getting the oak wilt in there and allowing that beetle to transfer you can pick back up again in august when that energy is going back into the roots great time to cut and, um, and especially during these warm-ups during the winter time you don't want to cut when it's um, below 20 degrees below freezing for many nights in a row uh, you want that sap to be moving this is a great time to cut and you can really really improve your property for this coming fall and i'd like to hear about it in the comments down below thank you